Hi everyone, it's Tracy Mode, and I thought tonight that I would show you how to paint a Christmas tree Christmas card. So there's a couple of options for us when we decide we want to paint our own card. You can go out and get little sets like this. This is Strathmore, and it's a 20 card set that comes with envelopes. Um, I've had this for years. I don't use it because I don't like Strathmore paper to paint on. It tends to buckle, and I don't feel like the colors are very bright on it, so with watercolor anyway. So I am not going to use that, but I wanted to show you that as an option if you wanted to do it a little bit quicker than what I'm showing you here. So this is a card that I've cut out of a sheet of Hanamule paper. And I'll show you how I did that in a sec. This is a little painting that I want to put on the card. I thought it would look super cute on a, car, a Christmas card. And it's not a hard painting. So this is an easy painting to do. All you need is the right equipment and bright, lovely colors. So I'm going to set this aside as well. Come back to making our own card. So may have said this already. I can't remember now. Hanamule paper. It doesn't have to be Hanamule. You can go with arches. You can go with other paper. This is a nice bright white paper, and I love the way the paint stays nice and bright when I paint on it. So I'm just going to cut out my little 5 by 7 card from a sheet of Hanamule, and I should have probably divided up a sheet in my head to tell you how much a 22 by 30 sheet would make of an 8 by 10 or not 8 by 10 5 by 7 card so let's see there is an inside uh, front side and a back side on the Hanamule and the smoother side is going to be the back side and it doesn't take paint as well so I'm going to make sure to use the outer um, the right side of the paper. So there's my five by seven. So what I'm going to start off doing is measuring out. Now this paper is an 11 by 15. So I want to get my ruler. I'm going to leave it at 11, but I want to measure in from actually I think I want to do it this way because the deckled edge is down here. So I want my deckled edge to be like if I had it sitting this way, it would be at the bottom. And it's this way, it's on the side. So let's do it that way. I'm going to measure seven, maybe just a tiny bit more. Um, let's do, since this is 15, we can do seven and a half, right? Seven and a half is 15. So I'm just going to make a tiny little, I should do it on the other side. That was my bad. So do it on the back side. Not all paper is like Hanamule where you can't paint on the back side of it or the uh, reverse side. This just doesn't seem to do very well with that. So I just uh, marked a tiny light line and then I'm going to line my ruler up. It looks like I was a little off there, but a little bit isn't going to matter. So I've got my mark and what I'm going to do is pretty well, I guess I could have folded in half. <laughs> I just had to do it the hard way. <laughs> and I've got just a butter knife with a very smooth edge to it so it's not all bumpy and rough. And I'm just going to use some pressure <coughs> and get that fold going. And then once again on the other side and then you can flip it back and forth and then start at the top and make a little notch and then tear and pull away. So that's how I've made my 
card. And on this one, this edge is clean and so is this edge. So I got my paper cutter and let's just get this up here. Show you how I did it. It's not too complicated. So I've got 10 inches here and I want to get about a quarter inch off each side. And get it down to a seven inch width. And then I'm going to make sure that I keep that deckled edge, but measure out 10 inches and cut that off. And you can keep this little scrap of paper for testing out your paint colors. I keep a lot of those around in my studio just to have and grab when I need to test out a color and see how it looks on the paper. So now I'm going to make sure I've got, this is the inside, and I'm going to go ahead and just fold that right in half and get my knife. And I want this to be a nice fold. So I'm going to do this several times. to get that fold nice and bendy or foldy. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we want it to be like a card. Okay, so I've got my paper here and tape that's not cooperating. So I'm just gonna tape the edges down and Put a little one here, because maybe I don't want to splatter on the back side of that card. And the only reason I'm really taping it down, because I'm not getting super wet, it's not like it's going to buckle too much, maybe a tiny bit, but not in a big way. So I'm just taping it down so it doesn't slide around while I'm painting on it. And I'm going to show you a few brushes that you could use. I'm gonna use my dagger striper. This holds a ton of paint and water. It gets really drippy and really um, splashy. You could also use a rigger, a long, this is a long bristle brush. This is a long round. It's just a longer round than some of the normal ones. This is a Princeton Velvet Touch. This is Princeton Liner, Princeton, excuse me, Liner. This is a Princeton Neptune. So all three of these would work. The longer bristled ones will work better. So keep that in mind. First thing I'm gonna do on this beautiful Hanamule paper that I've made into a card, I'm gonna get some water, just clear, clean water, and start by just adding some strokes onto the paper because what's going to happen when I do this is when I drop the paint in there it's just going to go everywhere that water is like a little little rivers and tributaries it's just going to flow around and it's really super fun so that's how I'm starting then I've got some bright colors all ready to go moist on my palette if you're Paints have dried on your palette. All you have to do is get a spray bottle and spritz them, and they'll bright, uh, moisten right back up again. So I've just got some green, and the thicker the paint is that I'm dropping in, the darker and brighter it'll be when it dries. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And I've got some Thalo turquoise, just gonna drop that in. So this is called Charging In Color. And look at how absolutely beautiful that is. It's so gorgeous. And then I've also got 
two places now. I've got a phthalo green, and those are, both are Daniel Smith colors. Look how awesome that is. Just flows around so pretty. And then I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more area of darker. I like my Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith is one of my favorite, favorite colors because it does so much with when you put it into some of the other colors. It just spreads out and granulates and it's so nice. Such a nice contrast. Now these are going to dry much, much lighter because there's so much water there. So maybe what I want to do is get my brush and just spread out some of that water and then the paint will just follow. And I do love this cobalt or yes, cobalt teal blue. I'm going to drop that in a couple places, a little bit thicker. So it sticks around a little bit more. And I love, love me some more yellow. Now I've got a, a pretty fun little tree shape. And again, I'm gonna add a little bit more color to that because when it dries, I want it to be brilliant. I want it to really be fun and festive. Now green and purple are complementary colors, so they're going to neutralize each other. I have this bright violet. I want to drop it in in a couple of places. And again, it's thicker. And look at the tip of this brush. How You have to be careful because it does get pretty wet and drippy on the end, but with a thicker color paint mixture, it really just gets flicky and fun. So I really like that. And then to add to that, I've got some Windsor and Newton has a color called Opera Rose that is super bright. Look how bright this is. Beautiful. So I wanna drop that in. And also keep in mind that green and red are gonna also neutralize each other. So. As I'm putting this in, I know that the areas that it touches the green, it, it's gonna neutralize and gray down. So I don't wanna put all of it in the green. I want some of it out. And I'm gonna try to stay a little bit looser. How about some of this beautiful orange? that right next to the yellow and again those are going to neutralize so I want to get some areas that are apart from the green now I'm grabbing some yellow and I just want to dot in a couple of little spots of just yellow Watch it spread. And again, this is a thicker color, so it's going into a wet wash. And if it's thicker, it's not gonna dilute as much with that wash that I'm putting it into. So there's that to think about. And this is a little bit more of a natural green I'm adding. It's a serpentine granulating. I don't want to get too much of that in there, though. Ruin my bright, whimsical feeling. Remember to have fun with this. So really, that's all there is to it. It's just... Bright, bright colors, loose, loose brush, and hold your brush on the very end so you get a looser feel and just dropping some thicker paint.
paint in there. Some of those areas where I put the pink. Love that. And how about, oop. Woo! Anywhere the paint goes is where the water has been. Anywhere the water is, the paint goes. So. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get carried away if I don't stop. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and let it dry and then sign my name to it put an envelope around it and send it off to any good friend that I appreciate in my life. I have a lot of good friends that I appreciate. Okay, so if you liked this video, hopefully you go try this yourself. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to um, share more of these videos with you. I'm going to soak up just a little bit of that. It's just a tiny bit too much water. Um, yeah, and I'll list the, the colors in the paper and the brushes in the description below so you can go look for them. If you don't have a dagger striper, don't go buy one. Just go use what you have and have fun. And we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care. Bye.